doubling is something that most saxophonists will have to do at one point or another, whether that's in a jazz big band or in a pit orchestra for a musical. Um, flute doubling can be a great way to get more gigs um, and just have fun on another instrument. So today I'm going to talk about different ways that you can up your flute doubling game. Alright, so number one is going to be just listen to flute players. So just like you would for saxophone players, um, listening to all kinds of professional saxophone players to sound better on your instrument, the same applies to flute players. Um, so I would recommend checking out both classical and jazz flute players. Um, a few classical flute players I can recommend is uh, James Galway. Um, he's a legend on the instrument. Um, he's, yeah, definitely check him out. He's a big name in the, in the classical flute world. Um, another classical flautist I enjoy is Jasmine Choi. I don't know much about her, but she is phenomenal. Um, as far as jazz, Elena Pinderhues um, is amazing. She is, uh, I believe, just a flute player, flute player and vocalist, um, but I don't think she plays saxophone. Um, and she is amazing, definitely beautiful flute tone. Um, check her out for sure. And then of course, like Joe Farrell, uh, he was with Chick Corea's band. He sounds great. James Moody. Um, there's all kinds of uh, jazz flutists you can check out. So definitely check out a mixture of jazz and classical. Um, oftentimes classical flutists and um, classically trained flutists are going to have like a really great tone. Um, so yeah, that that is great to check out. So yeah, listen to flutists. <sighs> Number two is practice the flute every day, especially when you're starting out. So this is something that most saxophone players don't do. Um, they'll just practice the flute like right before they have something, like if they have a part in big band or whatever, they'll pull out the flute and practice it like a week before. Um, if you continually practice consistently practice you're gonna sound a lot better by the time you actually have to play the flute on something um, and flute is a bit more finicky than saxophone so the muscles are different for the embouchure um, and it's easier to, to kind of lose that it's almost like trumpet in a way that you kind of have to like keep up on it a bit more otherwise the embouchure is gonna kind of go away so <laughs> yeah make sure to especially when you're starting out practice flute whether it's just like five to ten minutes a day um just for that upkeep and you're gonna find your tone improving a lot more and just like it, the the maintenance <laughs> on the instrument being a lot better um, so yeah, practice flute every day. <laughs> All right. Another good tip is to take classical lessons if you're able to. Um, that will really just help you with your tone. Uh, nothing is going to help you more on the flute than studying with a classically trained flutist and really working on that tone because the amateur is so different from saxophone. <laughs> And uh, yeah, <laughs> just study, study like you are a flute player, not like you're a saxophone doubling on the flute. I've, that's the approach I have taken um, in, learning sac or in learning flute and clarinet, just approaching it like I am a flute player and a clarinet player. Um, and I've found that I've had a lot of success with that. So yeah, if you are, are able to study with a classically trained um, flute teacher. All right, so I'm going to go through a few of the main embouchure differences between saxophone and flute. Um, so number one is it's much looser. The saxophone, you definitely have a bit more tightness, a lot more back pressure, um, whereas flute, you just loose, very loose as possible really. Um, you want to tighten really just the corners of your mouth. Um, and you can definitely hear it in the sound. If you are too tight, it's gonna come out, well it's gonna like shoot up the octave and it's, it's just gonna not come out as clearly. So for example, here's just a G playing normally. <laughs> Uh, 
versus if I tighten up. So yeah, airy, not coming out. So definitely loose. <laughs> Very, very loose, just be thinking that. Um, one thing that my flute teacher used to go through with me um, is doing like horsey lips. So just kind of loosening up your lips before you play. Um, and another thing uh, that's kind of ridiculous, um, like rolling your R's and trying to do that as this at the same time as the horsey lips. See if I can do it. It's, it sounds so ridiculous, but it is a it is a good way to see if everything's just kind of loose enough in there to uh, play the flute. All right, so another major difference is um, it's more of an O embouchure versus E, and this is the tongue position. I guess not exactly embouchure. Um, so you want your tongue kind of back in your mouth um, and just a lot of open space in your mouth because with the flute your mouth is part of the head joint really it's it's it the sound vibrates within your mouth um, because of the way the instrument works it's not like saxophone where you're blowing through and it's vibrating the reed and it's just going through the instrument it's like it's part of your, your face is like part of the, the instrument kind of. Um, so in order to have a really resonant tone, you want to have kind of an, Oh, like open space in your mouth versus that E tongue position of saxophone. So for example, if I'm going to play with more of an O open, versus more of an E. It's, it's kind of just hard to do. Um, so yeah, focus on that. Oh, really open. All right. And then another major difference is the tonguing. So obviously you're not tonguing on a reed. You're going to be tonguing on the roof of your mouth instead. So focus on that. Um, sort of the middle of the roof of your mouth and be tonguing on that so not too close to your teeth or your lips um so tonguing middle of the roof of my mouth versus tonguing too close to my teeth come out nearly as clearly. So those are a few things to focus on. Obviously there's there's a lot more um, which is where you would get the benefit of having a private teacher. So if you would like to take private lessons with me you can email me at coilangie at gmail.com or you can go to my website angiecoil.com and book your first lesson today. See you next time.